are moving on to our next story. I'm pretty sure you've probably heard by now, but the GOP primary in South Carolina was yesterday on Saturday. And as I predicted, Nikki Haley did lose, but she didn't just lose. She was slaughtered in her home state. I tried to warn people about this, but before the win, before Donald Trump actually won in South Carolina, he actually attended a black conservative federation gala. So we're going to make fun of this for a bit, right? Because first and foremost, some of the remarks that he made at this gala and two, where do you actually see who was actually in the audience at the gala? Now this Excuse gala me. took place Tell before um, Donald Trump won. Oh, that one was playing. Sorry. This gala took place before Donald Trump won, but you got to see this. This is just cracking me up. So one of the things I said before about Donald Trump is he has no filter. He has no filter. Listen to him explain why black people like him. This is crazy. And then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing. But it. And then I got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing, but it burns. And then I so first and foremost, what I've heard from people is not that they felt that he was being discriminated against, but they felt like it was a witch hunt. Okay. So there's that. And then two, this is another example of Donald Trump having no filter. There are certain things that we all kind of know, you know, everybody has that one friend. Don't you guys know that one person that has no filter and they say things in public that are really supposed to be either not said, or if you're going to say it, you say it behind closed doors. That's the thing with Donald Trump. He has no filter. So you hear what he's saying? You hear what he's saying? He's saying black people like me because they feel like I'm being discriminated against. They don't feel like, we don't feel like you're being discriminated against. But for black people who do support Donald Trump and are upset about all of these indictments, it's not because they feel like he's being discriminated against. It's because they feel like it's a witch hunt. So I think context matters. <laughs> I think that that matters. Now, here's the funny part. That gala, the black conservative gala in South Carolina, people were pointing out that most of the people that were there weren't even black. In fact, Fly sister posted this on Twitter. <laughs> she said that was a hundred percent, not a, gra a group of black conservatives. It was a room full of mostly white people. So let's check out and see who was there. And what's funny is they actually have the red arrows to show you who. So here's a black, black person here. There's a black guy on the stage speaking in this picture though. You can see. Yeah. So it's mainly. <laughs> It's mainly white people who are present at the black conservative gala and they have other pictures here as well. They got pictures of the entire room. Yeah. So you guys can see. Yeah, guys. So most of the people at this event are white, not black. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. But nevertheless, of course, the election did happen. And Donald Trump did beat Nikki Haley in her home state of South Carolina, but he didn't just beat her. He actually destroyed Nikki. This is really bad when you lose your home state, but you lose it by this much. So you can see here, Donald Trump won by 59.8%. He received over 450,000 votes, gained 47 delegates. Nikki Haley won by 39, or excuse me, gained 39.5%, over 298,000 votes. She gained three delegates. And honestly, people were still voting for, hold on. People were still voting for candidates that have actually dropped out of the race. Uh, Ron DeSantis pulled in a 0.4%. Vivek Ramaswamy pulled in or says less than 0.1%. Uh, 
uh, Chris, same with Chris Christie, Ryan Binkley, and David uh, Stuckenberg. But obviously, uh, this was the result. Donald Trump did win. But believe it or not, Nikki Haley is still staying in the race. Like, that's the... I know. I know. You don't have to tell me, okay? I already know. She's still staying in this race. And that's why I wonder if she's going to try to pull some type of independent run here or if she's just trying to stay in to see if Donald Trump is going to go to jail and then she'll be uh, a shoe in, I guess, as the Republican nominee. I wonder if she's hanging on to do that. She obviously has enough money to continue to stay in. Usually by this point, candidates will start to run out of money. And so they have no choice but to go ahead and uh, drop out of the race. But she apparently is still receiving donations, by the way. She has millions of dollars. She spent millions of dollars in South Carolina. But Donald Trump did win and he went on to give his acceptance speech. There were some cheers. There were some boos. Let's get into it. Thank you very much. That is really something. This was a little sooner than we anticipated. It was an even bigger win than we anticipated. And I was just informed that we got double the number of votes that has ever been received in the great state of South Carolina. So that's pretty good. So it's a record times two. And there's something going on in the country. Some really great things are going on. You look outside and you see all of the horror. You see millions and millions of people coming across the border illegally. We don't know where they come from. They come from jails. They come from prisons. They come from all sorts of places that we don't want to know. They come from mental institutions and insane asylums. And we don't want that in our country. We're not going to stand for it. We're not going to stand for it. You have terrorists coming in. You have people coming in that we just can't uh, we can't do could, could sustain what's happening to the united states of america no country so we're going to straighten things out the border is the worst it's ever been you know in 2016 we won we had a bad border and i talked about the border a lot talked about it a lot and uh, so we're going to fix it we're going to fix it we fix it very quickly and in 2020 we couldn't talk about it although we did get millions of more votes the second time but now there's a spirit that I have never seen. We ran two great races, but there's never been, ever, there's never been a spirit like this. And I just want to say that I have never seen the Republican Party so unified as it is right now. So what's really interesting is just how much Donald Trump is winning by against Nikki Haley in all of these states so far. So he says the Republican Party is unified. They're definitely not unified around Nikki Haley, because like I said before, the majority of the Republican base did not want Nikki Haley. The majority of the Republican base wants Donald Trump. And you can see that, obviously, from these primary races. So if I were Joe Biden, could you imagine Joe Biden on the debate stage right now? Like if the debate were this week, do you think Joe Biden would be able to handle himself on the debate stage against Donald Trump? the way that he did in 2020, I don't think that he would be able to. I really don't. Never been like that. And a big part of, uh, of that is the people standing behind me. These are, the, these are the biggest officials in South Carolina, but I say like the biggest officials in our country as far as I'm concerned. They're really, they're state figures, but they're national figures, and in the truest sense of the word, they love our country so much, and they want to see our country succeed and be respected again. Right now, we're a laughing stock all over the world. Our country is going to be respected again, respected like never before. I don't know if the United States will be respected again. And I, I say this because I just saw um, an article earlier today that says about 30 more countries are asking to join BRICS. So, you know, I, I think a lot of countries are, are not too happy with the United States. And I think they're tired of the U.S. Uh, bullying other countries. So I don't know that the U.S. would be respected again. So this is a, a fantastic evening. It's an early evening and a fantastic. So you can all go down and you can celebrate for about 15 minutes and we have to get back to work because the big day, 
the big day. You know, Michigan's coming up. We're doing great. The auto workers are going to be with us 100 percent because they got sold out by this country. But Michigan so that was one part that he mentioned that I'm surprised people have not pushed back on where he says that the auto workers in Michigan are going to be behind him 100 percent. The UAW already endorsed Joe Biden. So I don't know if and like I said, I told you before, a lot of times these unions are paid to endorse a presidential candidate, but they've already endorsed Joe Biden. That being said, though, remember, the president of the UAW did say that most of his members are not going to vote for Joe Biden. So maybe Trump will probably be able to go in and grab those votes, even though the endorsement went to Joe Biden. It'll be interesting. Michigan's up and uh, we're going to have a tremendous success there. And then we have a thing called Super Tuesday. And uh, I think we're leading 91 to 7 overall. Uh, if you don't mind, may I have the pleasure of introducing some incredible people? Uh -oh. Because they stuck right from the beginning, from the very moment we announced, and they believe in make America great again. That's what they believe in. They believe in America first. We're putting America first. First of all, my family, Melania, Baron, Don Jr. And Kim. So he goes in to thank uh, family members, but uh, we all know this is going to happen. That's actually pretty boring. But I think what you guys need to see is this, because he also shouted out Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, of all people, also from South Carolina. Lindsey Graham, probably one of the most shifty, corrupt, warmongering politicians. And he shifted on Trump, too. You know, that this is what Lindsey Graham does. He just moves with the top. Who is popular right now? I'm going to move with that person. He doesn't really have any firm principles. He just moves with whatever he thinks is going to, you know, be the focus at that point in time. But he's a shifty mofo, okay? But he actually brings up Lindsey Graham, and the crowd is not feeling the lens. They're not feeling the Lindsey. And this is another thing, too, because a lot of people say that, well, Trump didn't start any new wars. But he's still, you know, in, in cahoots with someone like Lindsey Graham. People say that Trump is going to stand up to the deep state, but he's still in cahoots with someone like Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham is not going to stand up to the deep state. Lindsey Graham loves the deep state. Lindsey Graham loves war. He's a corrupt, bloodthirsty politician. And the audience sees it. Listen to this. Another man, not a lot of people know him. He doesn't do too much television. He happens to be a little bit uh, further left than some of the people on the stage. But I always say, when I'm in trouble on the left, I call up Lindsey Graham and he straightens it out so fast. And I'll tell you, no, 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 remember, remember. What? So you see the crowd is booing Lindsey Graham? They don't like him. I don't understand how all these years, even when I lived in South Carolina, I don't understand how Lindsey Graham was continuing to win. I really don't. You hear the boos, boo, boo, boo. That's his state. So you have South Carolina turned on Lindsey Graham and they turned on Nikki Haley. Aye, aye, aye. I love him. He's a good man. Come up here, Lindsey. Come up here, Lindsey. Come here. Okay, are you ready? America, the nightmare you're facing is just about over. Help is on the way. This is the most qualified man to be president of the United States. And let it be said that South Carolina created the biggest political comeback in American history. Notice, uh, notice he didn't stay up there too long <laughs> because he was getting booed. Yeah, he's just not well liked. Now, as you know, Nikki Haley uh, also had to give a speech about her loss. Let's dive into it. I just can't, man. This woman is cracking me up. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
gosh. <laughs> but I love that about you. Thank you. You know, I want to start off obviously thanking my family. I am so incredibly blessed. I was able to speak with Michael this morning. Um, I just, his support has been amazing. The kids have really stepped up, sometimes too much, but they have stepped up in a way that has made me so, so proud. I am blessed because I had the ability to actually um, go vote today with my mom. You know, and there's something very special with the fact that she was a lawyer in India and she was named one of the first female judges. And because of the times, she was never able to sit on the bench. But the fact that she could go with me and cast her ballot for her daughter as president of the United States was an amazing <laughs> It's just funny to me. Woo! You lost. Thank my parents who taught me strength and grace. I want to thank Michael's parents who have been unbelievably supportive through all of this. And I want to thank my brothers and my sister and their families for always supporting us every step of the way. Thank you. I feel blessed tonight. I've felt blessed through this entire journey. Even when it's been tough, I haven't lost sight of that. I've felt God's strength and grace every step of the way. Did you feel God tell you to drop out? Because I just, I'm sorry, guys, that's bad. That, that's, that's wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's always funny to me because like, you know, down South and especially like when I go, you know, to visit like family down South, it's like any like bad situation, like people will just start out with like, yes, I got hit by that car, but you know what? I feel so blessed. I feel so blessed. Yes. I just, I just really do. And it's just, it's just kind of a thing that like people just kind of do. So Yeah. I'm just wondering if did she feel God tell her to drop out? I'm blessed to have served the state that raised me. And I look forward to continuing to be blessed to serve the state that raised me, whether it's going and voting with my mom or whether it is um, being with our family. We are very grateful for the good people of South Carolina. Thank you. And it's a blessing to know that across our sweet state, everyone wants to bring back the America we know and love. No, not everyone. If everyone wanted to bring back. <laughs> it's like. You didn't just lose. Like you were slaughtered, Nikki. Like he destroyed you, but you're going to say everyone wants to bring back the America that we love. If that was the, was the case, you would have won. You would have beaten Donald Trump. Not everyone. Just that 39% that voted for you. That's the underlying message of what happened today. I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory. And I want to thank the people of South Carolina for using the power of your voice. No, 39% power. No matter the results, I love the people of our state. I love what we accomplished together. And I love how we united during our worst challenges and tragedies. I've always seen our state as a family. Families are honest with each other. They say the hard truths. That's what I've done this entire campaign. They said the hard truths to you because they basically told you their hard truth, which was that they didn't want you. Like that was the hard. <laughs> oh my God. And that's what I'll do now. What I saw today was South Carolina's frustration 
with our country's direction. I've seen that same frustration nationwide. I share it. I feel it to my core. I couldn't be more worried about America. It seems like our country is falling apart. But here's the thing. America will come apart if we make the wrong choices. This has never been about me or my political future. <laughs> if it's never been about her, why are you still in the race, Nikki Haley? Why are you still like dragging this on when you've lost every state so far? If it's never been about you or your political future, what are you doing? What? Why, why are you so we need to beat Joe Biden in November. Yeah. I don't believe Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden. Yeah. Nearly every day, Trump drives people away, yeah. including with his comments just yesterday. So let me say something really quick. You know, she's revealing herself, right? Because the reason why Nikki believes that she can beat Joe Biden is because Nikki Haley knows she's going to get supports from Democrats as well. Think about that. Some of the people who think Joe Biden's too old are going to vote for Nikki Haley. Some of the Democrat loyalists, you know, like the party loyalists or whatever, or the centrists or whatever, that they want to vote for the Democratic Party because they are Democrats. But at the end of the day, they realize that Joe Biden is just his mental acuity is just it's gone. Right. And they know that Joe Biden cannot do another four years. Some of those people are going to vote for Nikki Haley. Some of those people, people like Robert Reich, I think, would do that. Right. He was the same one that was pushing uh, Liz Cheney over a year ago, like some of those same Democrats that said they would like to see Liz Cheney run or lead this country. I could see some of them voting for somebody like Nikki Haley if she was actually in the general. Because think about it. How would Nikki Haley beat Joe Biden if she doesn't even have the base of the Republican Party? Donald Trump has the base of the Republican Party. So that does not make any sense unless Nikki Haley knows that some Democrats are going to vote for her because they just don't want Joe Biden because he's too old, et cetera. And she'll probably get some more independence. Think about that for a second. Today in South Carolina, we're getting around 40% of the vote. That's that's about what that's about what we got in New Hampshire too. I'm going to count it. I know 40% is not 50%. But I also know 40% is not some tiny group. There are huge numbers of voters in our Republican primaries who are saying they want an alternative. I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. Let me pause here for a second. So I just want to remind you guys when I showed you the poll, some of the voters in South Carolina were still voting for people who dropped out. They chose Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy. They chose those guys instead of supporting Nikki Haley. Think about that for a second. They would rather vote for people who had already dropped out. That's how much they did not want Nikki. Yikes. <laughs> I'm a woman of my word. Yeah! 
child, it's like I'm sitting here watching, like, I don't know, a, a show on Lifetime or something. I'm a woman of my word. It's so scripted. It's so fake. So, yes, Nikki Haley is staying in the race. As she said she would, she is actually sticking by that. And it's really interesting here. I want you to hear what Joy Ann Reed had to say about Donald Trump winning South Carolina and why I think this is actually uh, irrelevant uh, when we look at the greater scheme of things. Listen to this. Two questions here we've been asking in these early primary contests from the exit polls and just wanted to get your uh, uh, read on these because we've talked about them a lot. I think they sort of serve as proxy questions in some ways. Number one, did Joe Biden legitimately win in 2020? That's one of the exit polls. Um, yes gets 32 percent of the folks voting in South Carolina, according to our exit polls. No gets 65 percent. So two thirds, one third there. And then a question about if Trump is convicted, is he fit to be president? Should he face criminal conviction in any one of the outstanding 91 indictments he faces? Um, you get, again, very similar numbers. Yes, he's still fit at 65. No, he's not at 32. Again, a sort of two thirds, one third. What's your read on that? Think about this for a second, guys. From the South Carolina GOP primary, 65% of voters at the exit poll said they would still consider Donald Trump to be fit for president if he is convicted. That is what Nikki Haley is up against. Think about it. Nikki Haley doesn't have indictments against her. And more people showed up to support Donald Trump in her home state. That's what she has to compete against. Right. And I think that you can go back to what Steve was just saying about the makeup of this electorate. I mean, this is a, what, 92 percent white, overwhelmingly evangelical Christian primary electorate in South Carolina. And I think writ large around the country, that is the way they think. I mean, even among the independent voters who are about, what, 21 percent of this electorate, it's like almost a 50-50 question as to whether President Biden is the legitimate president of the United States. That is what the Republican Party is now. It is a baseline condition of being a base Republican right now that you do not believe that the 2020 election was legitimate. You believe that Donald Trump is the rightful president of the United States. You believe that he's the most electable candidate. That's also in these exit polls, more so than Nikki Haley, which there's no empirical data that supports that. And you believe that he should be president regardless of whether he is convicted of a felony which he very likely will be in the next month. Two questions. Okay, let me just uh, say something really quick here about the white evangelical Christian population that she's referring to. So I understand that in reference to South Carolina. South Carolina is a part of the Bible Belt. That's what we used to call it. Like when I lived there, the people are like, this is the Bible Belt. You can find a church like everywhere, right? Like, so obviously there is more you know, churches there, there's more like religion, Christianity is more prominent uh, in the Bible Belt than it is uh, where I live uh, in, in the Northeast, right? So to Joy's point, what she was saying, then what is to explain for the win that Donald Trump had in New Hampshire? Because New Hampshire is not, people in New Hampshire are not overly religious. I'll just keep it real. Yes, there are churches there, but it's not the Bible Belt. You get people from all different, you know, all different walks of life, but they're not overly religious. So what is to explain for all of the, the voters who came out and voted for Donald Trump in New Hampshire? Because they're not all white evangelical Christians. Let me know. Look, I know peeps in New Hampshire. I know plenty of people that live in New Hampshire. That's what I'm saying. Let me know. How do you explain that one? It's something, man. It's something. Like I said, I get it with South Carolina, but with New Hampshire, 